A couple of years ago, I was at a conference for science filmmakers and documentarians, and there was a session on 360 video. Is that going to be the future of our medium? And in that session, they played a documentary that was shot in 360, and it was basically from a cruise ship up in Alaska, massive landscapes, huge glaciers falling off into the ocean. And it was pretty amazing. And they also showed uh, viewers who were watching the, this documentary in headsets. And then they interviewed those people afterwards, and they were saying things whoa, like, whoa, that is so amazing. If all documentaries were filmed in 360, maybe I would watch more documentaries. And uh, it was watching that when I realized 360 is really not going to be the future. Because even trying to convince ourselves that this is a great new technology, I still felt like the people's reviews fell a bit flat and like they were just trying to fool themselves or they had been brought in specifically for this purpose and they were just trying not to disappoint the person that they were helping out. So, my view is that 360 video is just going to be a fad and this is a video on seven reasons why 360 video is not the future. So let's start with a couple of technical points. Number one is resolution. As you may have already noticed, this video is a little bit soft. Even though it's shot in HD, when you stretch that around in 360, well, obviously it's going to be a little bit more pixelated than 360 in a uh, small one part of the world. Now, you might just say, well, obviously technology will get better over time, and of course it will, but I think we're still gonna have problems even as the cameras get better, even as the CPUs get better and the editing uh, is made more possible, we're still gonna have the problem of bandwidth, of trying to download and stream this stuff. And then my point number two is that we're shooting with these wide-angle lenses, everything except, say, me is pretty far away and so you're going to want to zoom in to get a closer look at certain things that you see around you. But that, again, brings you back to point number one, the resolution issue. So my point is, even for five or ten years into the future, we're going to be struggling to have really sharp video that allows you to get close up with everything in the frame, because obviously that is just a gigantic amount of information. Now, moving past the technical concerns are, I think, the bigger problems with this technology, which are that, number three, our brains just don't work this way. We don't interpret the world by looking in all 360 degrees of what we have available to us. Typically, we're looking ahead, and our eyes also only have really the ability to resolve detail in a very small region. So, typically, uh, we are looking at a particular point in space and not much else. And sure, we could look behind us, but we don't typically. And I'm not sure that it adds that much to storytelling. And I guess that brings up point number four. If I am trying to tell you a story or explain to you some science, um, I want to help direct your attention. I want to show you the things that I think you need to see in order to understand what I'm talking about. And I don't want you looking to the side or behind you, you know, kind of like that kid in class who's like staring out the back window when he should be paying attention to what's on the board. I think it doesn't actually help to have more freedom. I mean, it sounds like it does. And this is point number five. A lot of people will make the argument that if we give people the opportunity to discover their world, they will do a lot better than if we force them to look at particular things. But I think that goes against what we know about learning. I mean, the whole point of having a teacher is to have someone who can uh, eliminate the clutter for you and point out the things that you should be focusing on. Otherwise, it's a bit like trying to learn science by pointing someone at the universe and just saying, go, go and figure out what's going on. All of the advancements we've made in science have happened by really careful and close examination of the world. And uh, our ability to teach people that really requires stripping back uh, all of the clutter, all of the other distractions that people may get um, well involved in when they should be focusing on the salient features. I have an example of this. I shot a video a couple years ago where I dropped a tennis ball and asked a couple of girls whether... I asked them to predict if it was speeding up, if it was going at a constant speed, or it was slowing down, or what was happening to the ball. So this is very careful observation on the part of uh, these people on the street. So let's have a look at that video. Three, two, one. Yeah. Would, you, would you say its speed was constant, or do you think its speed was changing? Constant. Yeah, it was the same. Yeah. 
the whole way down. Yeah. So there, even if you're paying really close attention to your world, uh, you still don't notice acceleration because it's just one of those things that's really tough to see. And my point is a lot of people will say, well, you got to see it to believe it, but I think you have to believe it to see it. The actual artistry of filmmaking comes from knowing what to show you and what not to show you. And, you know, 360 video takes a lot of that control out of the hands of the creator. And uh, as yet, I think there's no demonstrable point to making a video in this way. I mean, they're really just kind of atmospheric pieces. Granted, I think you're getting a very nice look around the uh, Seoul street markets here. My final point, point number seven, is that I think a lot of the hype around 360 video is based on this new technology, that we can now do this at a reasonable price point and we've never been able to do it before. And so obviously people are excited and I think that leads people to overstate what this potentially could do. But I've seen this pattern before, like in 1922 when Edison said that uh, the motion picture would replace textbooks. Or in 94 when uh, Semaron Boyer said that that video discs would revolutionize education. Or in 2013, when uh, The Atlantic said that massive open online courses would revolutionize education. There is this real pattern of having new tech, like uh, 3D television sets, and thinking that that changes everything. And really it doesn't, because fundamentally, it misses the point of how our brains work. Our brains work in a nice linear way where we can we can tell stories in really finely crafted detail and showing you only the things that you need to see to get the point and without you missing something just because you were looking at the wrong point in the screen at the time. So, uh, if that is my viewpoint, that 360 video is not the future of this medium, then why did I buy this camera and uh, why would I make a video in 360? And my answer is because I'm open to being wrong. Because when you think something is true, you should try as hard as you can to disprove yourself. And I'm trying that now. So I'd love to hear your comments. Do you like 360? Was this video interesting for you? And uh, would you like to see more of these in the future? Let me know in the comments below. As I say, I'm completely open to being wrong.